is on. Hello, folks. Welcome for Project Health Hangout number three. This has been going so very well. We've had such great feedback coming in. Uh, putting out a couple of posts that are full of lots of information doesn't always lend itself to comments when it's perhaps new mm. information. Um, so mm. to set the context for what we're looking at and where we are today, um, I'm going to read a statement from the top of the team's website, and then we'll dig in. Um, the This is part of the sustainability team. It's a newer team in WordPress, and the sustainability team focuses on three pillars of sustainability, what that looks like for the WordPress project. Option one, social sustainability, finding ways to increase the diversity and well-being of the WordPress community. Second, environmental sustainability, reducing energy and waste consumption in the development and usage of the WordPress software and its community activities. And then the last one is economical, finding ways to economically support contributions to the WordPress project for those that need it. Um, so I think that the work that we're looking at right now is probably twofold. And my dog has left the room. So now, <laughs> sorry <laughs> if you heard her barking. Um, so we are looking at ways to improve largely social sustainability, but also this can impact a couple of secondary areas. So we've identified, before I start digging into the kinds of tools and why we're looking at all of this, we've identified people that could be interested in having more data than the props list that we see at releases, which is a good list. However, it may not be the most comprehensive option, as I've seen some comments already commit on some posts. Um, there are different things for us to explore and to look at, and this is really going to be a brainstorming session around that. We really value having lots of input from different parts of this project. So the four areas that I, I started thinking about, uh, team health, Matt's presented stats dashboard initiatives. I asked him about it at EU last year. Um, Andrea and I spoke about it in 2020. I think Kareem asked him a question about it nearly a decade ago. Uh, so people have been talking about stats dashboard. It's a long time. And it's time that we see a little bit of progress with that. So from the lens of teams, first and foremost, how would teams know, here's the work that needs to get done, what's actually getting done? How do we better communicate that to ourselves, to others in the project? to others that wish to contribute to the project? How do we help break some of that information down? Individual contributors are in that mix. Some of them may be, uh, I am sponsored by GoDaddy where I work to contribute to the project, but for I think about 13 years of contributing to WordPress, I was not sponsored at all. Um, and I did it while also running a business or teaching or a few other things. Um, some people do it as a hobby because it helps them between trauma surgery. Thank you, Dr. Andy Fragan. Um, then there are others that are organizational stakeholders. And we have at least two of us present that represent organizational stakeholders. Those that perhaps work in organizations that either wish to send staff to contribute and or sponsor contributions and or perhaps other expenses. Uh, so they would be some people that might want some data to help make some good decisions. And then finally, of course, WordPress project leadership might want some data. And right now, the main data that we see during state of the word addresses are beautiful bubble charts about contribution, but that is largely focused around releases. And even that may not be totally fair as we'll dig into. So uh, that's what brings us to wanting more metrics and looking at what does health in the WordPress project actually mean? What does that look like broadly? What does that look like for these different stakeholders to assess? Um, and for some context, this is something that a few of us have met a couple of people in other open source projects that start looking at data, which is great. Uh, a year ago, I had the opportunity to attend Open Source Summit North America. And from that, I introduced Nyoko to one of my contacts, Diane. Diane used to be the community manager for Red Hat Enterprise Linux before IBM brought it in-house. Uh, and also some of the folks in the chaos community. Chaos is such a fun word. Um, and Ben had the opportunity recently to travel to this year's version of Open Source Summit North America. Unfortunately, it did not work for me with my kiddos schedule, but uh, the chaos group, Community Health Analytics and Open Source Software, 
they have been a phenomenal resource for some of us to learn about how other open source projects uh, approach some of these things. Thank you, Nayoko. And they have all kinds of great resources on their site. They are part of the Linux Foundation. So you could dig in and read about their charter and what that looks like it means. But also you could see that they that this organization exists essentially to create software to help open source projects consider what metrics might be important as well as drafting examples of metrics. This is not the only group, but I would say that this is probably the foremost group that has everything so tidy and organized that we could consider, but there are other ones out there. And certainly we could do our work to go looking at other kinds of open source projects and learn what has and has not worked for them. What were the wins and losses from that? Um, you know, one on my radar is looking at how Drupal has handled some of these things and where could we make use of how Drupal has done something similar? Um, so that's kind of the context or the framework. And out of that has come, let me make sure that the right screens are showing. I think I'll pull Slack back off my computer and share. Now, every time I go to share, every time without fail, Zoom will reorient which window you all are in. And that's weird. So so just a moment to share my screen and find you again. There you all are. You're beautiful. You're wonderful. Thank you. Uh, so <laughs> here you go. You see a little bit of what I drafted for an agenda, but what I want to do, and we don't have to cover any or all of that. I really just want to hear from you after I show you where we started. So we have um, WP org, Maturja, and when I get through this login, Do, 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 do. Um, when I get through the login, you'll be able to see that we have connected WordPress's GitHub. So this is a tool that can connect GitHub. It can connect a number of things. WordPress work happens in lots of different places. And I shared this post, which I know, Ben, you saw and, and enjoyed quite a bit. There's some more in there that I need to update. But this is just a spreadsheet that I keep for myself of, our project is huge. Where do the teams work? What are they doing? There, This was updated as of three weeks ago, but there is more even yet to add to that. So I need to swing back around with the media core information. I've since realized I haven't accounted for Help Scout. Uh, I don't know how to get data out of Figma for the design team and what they work on. Um, and Ben pointed to a couple of areas of training that overlap with WordPress TV. And right, so... <laughs> This is like every GitHub repo, every GitHub discussion space, every track, every uh, all the things. And as soon as a new repo gets added, this sheet is now updated. There are ways to kind of work through that. So we have hooked up just GitHub. And right now we're trialing Baturja as software. And it is a SaaS offering. So software is the service. What they have done is taken some software that Chaos Group has created, which is called Grimoire Lab. They've brought that in among a couple of other open source tools and then synthesized it to all work together with a couple of extra goodies thrown in. I'll just make it simple like that. Grimoire Lab, it turns out, as I started doing my research, is under things like Linux version of their insights. The Linux Foundation itself has insights. And so they're using Grimoire Lab under the hood there. So it makes sense to explore what a lot of the open source projects already have set up. But that doesn't mean that we're sold on this. There is a... For context, a $1,000 a month expense right now, and all we have hooked up is Gromori Lab, and Automatic is covering that expense for us. If we choose not, if we choose to go with Baturja, correct myself, if we choose to go with Baturja, there'll be an additional expense incurred to hook up additional things. What what Baturja and or Gromori Lab can hook up sort of depends on a lot of things. It can actually ingest, it used to be able to do Meetup, that API, I think Meetup itself has changed, so it can't. But it can pull in Slack. It can pull in um, RSS. What it can't do, really, that WordPress might find valuable is someone that's revised something in WordPress, like a team handbook, or learns website, or uh, what's going on inside of Glotpress, or um, if we forego Meetup and go with GatherPress, that's something that might be greenlit soon. Uh, it would behoove us to explore ways of getting some endpoints that say anything on the WordPress network, this piece has been revised by this person to attribute 
all of that effort, I think about Andy, when you were doing all the posts that eventually came up to the rollback plugin, not only were you doing the code work, but also writing those posts onto make sites and then handling the comments. And it wasn't just one final announcement. It was years of here's a little more information and a little more. And so to me, that all is part of that contribution and measuring that. So if we were to explore that, we could either with some of these tools, we might be able to build because Grimoire under it is open source. We could either get some talent to build it, or we could pay for it to be built. There are some options Georg has mentioned. Georg is our contact at uh, Baturja and also part of, he founded the chaos group. So um, that's kind of context, but let's look at what this tool can do. Just so we see, we see that there are companies listed, the work of associating that Ben Evans is also this user in GitHub is also this person over here. Izada has largely handled matching our identity together and then looking at our profiles if it matters for who is sponsoring our time. Uh, so there are ways to synthesize that together. We can see that this is showing me the last 90 days, but I can do things like say, show me all the way back in time. Let's go to years, 21 years ago, since we're now 21 years old. And I could see that the information changes. Sergey, who many of us know, touches almost everything that merges into core. So Sergey has definitely a lot of commits um, when we look over historical data. So this is only going back as far as the project to use WordPress uh, and GitHub at this time. Like it's only connected to GitHub. Um, additional kinds of data that you see in here, I could go through and look at GitHub PRs. We could set up lots of different types of dashboards with this tool. And if we find the tool itself insufficient, there are lots of APIs off of this that could work with open search, which makes dashboards possible. So we could, we could really get wild with the kinds of things that this does. This just funnels the data into some nice APIs and gives us some visualization on it. Um, but I can look through all of this and see things like submitters over time, uh, who submitted what information. There's my coworker, Georg. Um, I could go in and filter down and look maybe a little more specifically at any one organization. There are some spots that have repos in particular. So if I wanted to dig in and say, uh, let's go into the GitHub repos overview and let's filter down to mm, search, add a filter. Let's add a filter for repo and we'll put on there. Does it want to learn? I don't know if it's gonna, eh, let's try Gutenberg. Uh, learn. Oh, I'm sorry, I see what I'm doing, repo. So a lot of what we have in the software so far, Izada has set up, repo is, that's what I need. And then we'll put in learn, except that my L is being sticky, value, value. Let's see, drop down. Oh, no, I don't want to list with the numbers. Value is, let's hit save here and filter to mm -hmm, get, is GitHub repo, edit. And then I could start getting in and saying, you know, if I wanted at the moment, I'm having a bit of a demo malfunction, we'll say. Um, but I could start filtering it down and look within. So if I were to pick any one of the repos that are here, not sure if I could find learn right off the top. Uh, let's see, there's the book, plugin dependencies, the movie demo. So we could get in and we'll pick on playground for now. And I will say filter for this value and show me just the data that's coming in from one particular repo. And it's going to tell me that here are the number of forks and the stars and, you know, there's additional data that we could get. That one may or may not mean a whole lot to us because Playground is not necessarily core or Gutenberg, but we can start seeing some data that comes in in those ways. And then under areas like community, we could also see, I'm not going to go into the demographics or the contributor growth because automatically I'm going to say, oh, there's part of this. I don't want to show everybody contributors who are no longer contributing as much as they used to. They suddenly dropped off. Why is that? I feel like that information, it could be useful for someone that uh, in the context of, I've been a team rep. 
And when I'm a team rep and somebody has been consistent and then they suddenly fall off, I think about them as a person. And I want to know like, hey, if you don't wish to contribute right now, okay, but I'm just doing a human check-in. You doing all right? Or is there maybe a miscommunication somewhere? Or what do we need to, like, is there anything to communicate here, basically? Uh, and then move on, right? So that's not data that we would necessarily make public. It's worth mentioning that this tool is available in ways that you could stick everything behind a hash mark if somebody is not logged in so that you get numbers, but no names, no identifiable information. That can be made semi-public, which then means that we should get some people that know data science pretty well and know how to work with big data to help us with the stories that we tell with that data, for sure. A lot of this data, though, is fine. To I mean, it's very, it it's open source. We work in the open. Um, so there is that aspect to it. But if I were to look at, for instance, um, maybe I'll go into, I want to pick maybe just one more area to kind of show, to do data status. Okay. So I could start seeing that in here, there is, that tells me a little bit about some of the retrieval info. That might not be a practical one for right now. Not about the dashboards, GitHub issues. Let's pick something in there. Efficiency. Let's look at issues that have been open a long time. <laughs> How do we identify which issues are open a long time, which are not? So there's a lot of data, but even more than that, um, in the chaos group, you can see that there are lots of different types of metrics that are available. And to Andy's point, Andy in the comments had left us a, a comment about, um, you know, is getting a single prop for something that was lots and lots of lines of code, lots and lots of effort, is getting one of those on par with getting maybe a, a minor fix, maybe a typo fix, like how we weigh those things would be different. And so I look to the other areas of what are some other ways that we could look at this, not just having one single number to identify what's healthy or not, but having a trajectory, a, a long tail amount of what's going on. And I could think of medical analogies here, but I will refrain myself. I'll let the good doctor tell us if he's got analogies or not. But I just think that, you know, seeing something as at one moment in time is a snapshot. And um, we see a period of data that goes back quite a ways that could tell us more about what we have currently happening than just what we see in that exact moment. And so um, when Andy brought it up about, you know, is it fair, comparable in the way that people are recognized? I think about, you know, it certainly wouldn't be, we, I don't know that we'll ever have data quantifying every action that we take, and I'm not sure we should, but doing something like lines of code might be an, uh, at least a little, it's, it's better than having just one number that's like on par with people that fixed that same number of typos, right? Like that's not the same work. We know this. It's valuable work. It's not the same work. And so having different kinds of data points that can measure different types of things, I think is going to move us in the right direction. The European crowd this morning, my morning anyway, for my Japanese friends, it is morning for you. But in my morning, uh, the European crowd had expressed a lot of concern around privacy and things. And so um, this is built by a company that, well, the Gramore Lab, the open source software itself, was built to adhere to GDPR standards by a pile of Europeans that worry about GDPR. So I don't claim to know all of those laws, but yes, these thoughts are certainly with us. Um, other kinds of things that I can quickly show off. If you are interested in, let's see, is this one ours or no? There is one that I have for this one down here that says Slack. Um, the chaos group is connected to Paturja as well. I know this gets a little weird. It's like calling our meta team meta or something. Um, so <laughs> they have a demo version available and you'll see the way that they have hooked Slack up. This is taking a look at the Slack interface for the chaos project. And you can see here is some data that says, you know, this person sent this many messages. This person did this. So you show up to a team meeting. She wouldn't it be nice to be able to attribute some of that. I also thought this morning with the folks that we were meeting with about the, the people that do knowledge work, 
I would venture to guess that Josefa has no need to log all of the knowledge work that she does for reporting numbers. However, I would also venture to guess that one of my coworkers that often is a core tech release lead, uh, we have to continue advocating for why we continue sponsoring this individual to contribute and why this individual, this seasoned individual with this amount of permissions needs some of that information in a data format to present to stakeholders to ensure that they can continue contributing, right? So there's a lot of factors. Um, and so I just present all of this to say, we need to think broadly about some things. You're welcome to take a look further over you know, the, the Baturcha Analytics demo from the Chaos Group as well. That doesn't require a login. You all can see the information that's here. Um, and certainly you can look through all of the different types of metrics that Chaos makes available and draw inspiration from really almost anywhere else that you find it. So we're open to hear some of that feedback and to hear your thoughts or concerns. Um, I should note with us, Andy is in the core team primarily and does a lot of contributing in the form of dev work uh, and does this without being compensated for the work that he does. I would also say that Nayoko and Ben are sponsored as am I. They are sponsored by Automatic. Nayoko is working on a lot of the Five for the Future initiatives. Ben works uh, in the training team and the content that goes out to learn, very valuable work there. And then Roger is at Kinsta and would probably represent a stakeholder in an organization looking for how do we get involved and contribute. So that sets the context for those of us that are here. And I'm going to stop talking. I want to hear you. <laughs> Courtney, you've referenced me several times for what I what I wrote there. And I'll, I'll be the first to say I yeah. don't have the answers. Um, yeah. I, I, some of that data is, is real interesting. And it can certainly, I would think, help... Um, people like Naoko and Ben so that Automatic can look at what they're doing and say, yes, they're doing, they're not twiddling around the day. They're they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Mm. So our big brother really is watching you. Be careful. <laughs> um, from my standpoint, I think, you know, I think it's good to focus on the dashboard, not like it so much. So I think it, what uh, Andy said is more about like uh, individual uh, visualization of individual contribution. And uh, while that's one of the uh, target, I think my my work uh, target or goal is to um, get more companies to see the benefit of Five for the Future and the contribution and get someone like, you know, Courtney to say, like, I'm doing this impactful work. So I'd like to actually focus on, like, an overview of, like, creating convincing story from the data. Mm -hmm. So I'm, yeah, I'm curious what's the, you know, balance between, you know, individuals uh, wanting to feel motivated and also accountable for the work they do and uh, um you know this presentation to someone like you know someone like Roger or someone else in the company to mm -hmm. see their employees impact so yeah that's why I'm curious about yeah I think I view dashboards I'm looking at it from a team lead perspective and so if we do something new in the team I want to be able to see data that says whether that thing we tried worked or not oh, um yeah. so like so like what if we start an onboarding program in the training team i would expect active team members to grow um and then that would that data would happen like a few months after onboarding's done mm -hmm. but we don't have that at the moment so we do these things but we don't know if it worked or we feel like it was good but we're not like a feeling isn't objective mm -hmm. yeah. um so I think I think having dashboards um, so that even if we just track things, um, I think would help leadership in, at different levels, like see whether what they're working on is impactful or not. Uh, yeah. So that's another perspective I'm coming at this from. <laughs> yeah, mm. absolutely. And I thought too, Ben, about a lot of the work of um, kind of the overhead when we issue badges. There's a lot of mm. just logistical things that reps 
a lot of this conversation came from Andrea and I speaking about what would we want the training team's dashboard to look like and mm. what kinds of data points do we need? And so mm. here we are, and now you're the training team <laughs> and that's great. Uh, so the uh, to your point though, there is a lot of administrative overhead on team reps when they wish to adequately make sure that people are attributed and accounted for. And I am delighted to see the training team thriving where it has been. Uh, having been contributing to that team since 2014. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I know that that's something that it is a, uh, trying to help the reps definitely have some some actual data to back up. This is helping this uh, calling people in and welcoming our new visitors and onboarding them, all of that. That would be very compelling to know that data for sure, or to know that mm, maybe we could focus somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, oh. So uh, to end this point, sorry to uh, yeah. speak again, but uh, I think it, what uh, tying to what ben, ben said, uh, I think individuals can see what is impactful work mm -hmm. through this dashboard. So that's 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 what's most important for individuals, and yeah. and it also leads to their employers seeing them doing impactful yeah. work. So yeah, Andy, I also think so. To your point, sure. Paid, con paid contributors and those backing the project in, in a means of send staff or send money. Uh, I, I don't want to deny that there is some of that afoot for sure. I'll be the first to say that, but also as one who wants to get people that wish to be sponsored, because that was me up so until three years ago today, uh, that was me. And I gave, I gave probably a lot to this project in a way that maybe uh, in hindsight, I could have put myself into a better financial spot before I got sponsored. Um, and we have contributors like that. They are so wildly passionate and great at that one thing that they do. And if they wish to be sponsored, I certainly don't want to say that one who is sponsored has more authority, weight, et cetera, than one who is not. And so I hear your concerns, Andy, for sure. Um, but I also want to acknowledge yeah, that- What you're saying it, makes a lot of sense as far as for yeah. those individuals who- do contribute who are looking for sponsorship. Yep. It's a great way to show the sponsors, hey, look, this is this is my history. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it, why it has more meaning than a badge. Um a badge yeah. is good, but this gives more context. I've mm -hmm. I've earned just about all the badges I'm gonna end up earning. Um <laughs> up, props are nice, but it, it, you know, I look at, you know, and, and and I've even, you know, had my picture in the thing for being a noteworthy contributor. I think the first time that happened was around 4.2. And you, honestly, what I'd really like is some easy way to figure out which versions of WordPress I contributed to. There must be an API for that somewhere. I have no idea where that is anymore. I think right. Marcus might have something on the WP.world, but don't hold me to that. Uh, the WP.world pulls in as many APIs as the guy can find. Uh, <laughs> it is a uh, informal method of locating where in the world contributors are. It does it down to a city level if you so desire to be on that site and take part in that. And it will connect to your .org profile and a few other things. So like you could say here is me and .org and from that we'll get some data. I don't know if he has those numbers, but if anyone would, he would probably have it hooked up. But I mean, I want to think you know, as far as some of these features that I've worked on, yeah. we had an, we had basically roll back all of it working to, so they could start thinking about committing it in 5.0. Of course, 5.0 had other priorities. Mm -hmm. And then after that, other priorities exist. And then it was just, honestly, the project was too big for any one person to even consider reviewing other than those of us who were actually coding it yeah and the way we made progress is by breaking it up into three parts yeah yeah it's very valuable i think do you do you see that if if uh could there be data available i guess i should put it this way could there be data available that would help identify these areas that are so close to finally shipping and what it would take to get there so I've seen a couple of GitHub issues recently that were the patch has been sitting there, but the ticket just is is sitting. 
and the patch is there and it's not conflicting with anything according to tests, but yet it doesn't get merged. Do you think so, that we could use the data to help identify some of these common occurrences? Honestly, here's here's what I think a, a large part of the problem ends up being. You you sewed it when you showed some of the, the historical uh, contributors to WordPress. Yeah. I look at a lot of those lists and I see people like Ryan Bourne and yep. and Roz and Nason mm -hmm. and I didn't yeah. see Jake there, but I know he's there and I know if I, if I change the I window Helen of time, Sandy. he's gonna be there. Yeah. And I know <laughs> Helen Sandy. These yeah. were all lead developers yeah. of WordPress. Yeah. There are two remaining. Dion and and, and Matt has even publicly said that the term lead developer on that handbook page, I think it was a, a conversation on Twitter X. Um, but that that was more of an honorary title at this point and not a functional. It shouldn't designation. be. It, it, it Might shouldn't be beyond be. our scope today. <laughs> there could be people who are who, you know, like Dion and like Andrew, and mm -hmm. at this point, probably Sergey, right? Yeah, been in the project and done enough things that they have the ability to make these sweeping architectural changes or de or decisions that mm -hmm. don't require, I don't know, huge committees. And and I and I all, honestly I also uh, I think I said it somewhere is any new feature should have a lead developer assigned to them. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I I almost think of the need of project management, but without the committee, I, I understand. Who wants more meetings? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even it's sometimes it's not even about meeting more meetings. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think of, of some of those parts where how do we identify, for instance, in core, this idea that there are parts that are just sitting there and waiting and let's do this thing. I've been hearing more of that kind of feedback recently. And I'm not sure if this can help solve for some of that. Um, if, if we see that there are some data points, certainly that would be useful, that would be great to be able to offer to people that are in authority to help make the change happen. Matt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean I've I've kept Matt abreast of what's happening with this as best as I can. Um and he pointed me on to also Otto and Scott. So I'm interested in seeing what they've been working on as well. So coming in with maybe a fresher eyes uh, to the project, <laughs> longtime lurker, uh, recent. Uh, uh, and Roger, I have already told Roger this, fresh eyes, don't undervalue that gift. Because people like Andy and I that have been around this project a bit, we don't remember what it's like to be a beginner as easily. So please be our beginner for us. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, so the things that I'm I'm dealing with, right, trying to convince an organization to allow employees to spend their working hours working on the project yeah. is there's two things, right? There's a, I'm con trying to convince leadership like, Hey, this is, this is a good move. Um, and, and, you know, explaining that more than just saying, Hey, it's for WordPress, right? Like trying to get more specific. And, and I, and I hear a lot of talk around maybe using this data to find areas where it's like, hey, if we could get an experienced PHP developer involved on this project, we could get it done in 15 hours, 50 hours, something, right? And and also knowing that, you know, you can't make solid estimates on development time, but just an idea. Um, so that's on the organizational side. On the individual side, uh, I like it's constant um, non-developers who are like, I, I don't, how can I contribute to WordPress and communicating that to them? And I point them to different teams to look at, um, but it's intimidating, right? Like you jump into this thing and there you go into Slack and there's just a whole history there um, and just trying to get your foot uh, in the door and just kind of grasp a little bit of like, okay, where can I get started? How can I get started? Um, uh, so, you know, and I think again, having the data to find parts of projects for, you know, I know we already do tags where it's like, hey, this is a good first ticket. Um, 
you know, for a non-development situation, what's the equivalent of that? Do we have those types of things highlighted of, hey, if you're just getting started into here, uh, you know, here's kind of an introduction to how we use Slack, right? Because there are differences. Sometimes threads get used, sometimes they do not get used. Um, uh, you know, here's how the make website works. Here's how to interact there. Um, so, and then the mentorship program is something that's very exciting. And the idea, there's a kind of a newer idea of a um, more mentor on demand uh, type program where people can just get quick help with things. So, you know, I'm, I, I'm looking at all of this data going, wow, this is amazing, but is it answering these kind of critical questions to get more people involved in the project and to get more people involved who are being compensated, whether directly or through sponsorship? Um, so that, you know, while, you know, developers come and go for various reasons, and I'm aware of, you know, all types of reasons behind WordPress and why people might leave the project, but also people just leave it because they're tired and they need to do something else. So getting yeah. new people to come in to those areas, uh, you know, is just, I can, it's just going to be critical for the project moving forward. And so how can organizations help with that? And the five for the future pro project is awesome. Um, you know, I think that that gives those nice little stepping stones that can show leadership quickly of, oh, this is what our competitors are doing, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, and, and people see that, right? When I talk to prospects, People like they go and look at the WordPress.org website and they see, am I involved in the project and things like that. And so, you know, using some sales techniques to convince organizations to get involved, I think is is definitely a valid thing to start looking at. I will be the first to say as soon as uh, WPCS and PHPCS with Juliet became an issue about half a year ago. Essentially, Juliet needed to be funded or she could not continue working on this. And this is the code quality that underpins not just core, but also many of the plugins, I would guess themes as well. And that's what we call in the industry a bus factor of what maybe one and a half, because uh, Dennis also contributes to that area, at least at that time. And so, and we had a similar thing happen with Mika stepping out from plug and review team. Thankfully, we were able to handle that transition as a project better um, in terms of coming in to support Mika offboarding, gathering all the historical information. Mika is healthy and well. Mika is still available if people need to ping and ask the weird, oh yeah, we forgot to document the thing question to Mika, which is great. Um, but also Mika was a team of one and a little bit of Otto's time a half uh, for the entire plugin review team. And we see that it just keeps ramping up and we need to keep growing this team. And also there are seasons. I, I stepped out of contributing for three years for having young children and some other life stuff. So um, I hear a lot of those points and I will echo as well. That when it comes to now, well, there's probably even more that could be had here, maybe in a, a session for folks like uh, Roger and myself when we're going to our stakeholders internally. Um, I had to really raise a scene to get Juliet some funding from my organization. We we sponsor at GoDaddy OpenJS. We were part of the founding organization that funds the JavaScript project. People don't know that. Also. Why was it so easy to get that one approved in budget, but yet it's challenging specifically in WordPress? So um, I think that's an area for us to explore. And a lot of with JavaScript, it's some money and then they help distribute the funds to cover travel costs for people to get to the conferences and some things like that. So um, there are ways that we can look at that, but I am working internally on I look at my engineer's leveling guide, the thing that tells them how they progress in their career. It says contributing to open source is part of that. However, getting their managers to give them the time to contribute is, is a challenge. And so then I look up the ladder and I'm like, well, who else do I go to? Who do I go to? Who do I go to? Right up, up the ranks and justifying that against um, 
ensuring the profits are there and the slant on contributing is security and our customer needs our customers need the content that's on docs and learn and in their languages as close to release as possible because now we have all the support bots and I'm not saying GoDaddy does but now we have the support bots in place that will answer the WordPress questions from the source or maybe we're embedding the content like we need to do better at coordinating and of course I think Roger's like me in in being able to make some of those cases but I also think that um data will be more helpful and considering how other projects secure the funding that they whether that's funds or people power whichever direction that goes uh how do they call in in other projects why is it that maybe wordpress is more of a struggle than other projects thoughts i don't know but i i hear those those thoughts and those concerns for sure um some of the ideas that came up earlier Birgit Olson was on one of the first calls. Birgit brought up her work in DEIB. Birgit being an individual that is open to receive sponsorship for the work that she does, uh, but also, and would need data to support this work. Uh, another contributor told me they manually tally the information that sits on make slash updates. <laughs> That's why the update site is still valuable and why we should keep that alive. That one person gets her contracts and says, here's my data and has it to back it up. That's important. Uh, but let's maybe make it not so manual for that individual. Also, um, when I was speaking with Birgit about some of this, she was inquiring again to some privacy, especially when we're looking at DEIB metrics. And uh, it sort of sparked a thought, Nayoko, to swing by you with five for the future listings, whether someone signs up for five under individual or as an organization, perhaps when they're in their logged in experience of maintaining their five listing, we could put some data that might not be appropriate to be widely public, but is just about either that individual or that organization. Um, mm -hmm. That way it's somewhere re relevant, maybe. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think it, so even, you know, with the Bitterger information, we don't need to expose yeah. a lot of details. And I think that's where our yeah. challenge is, you know, what is these like indicators that uh, help but you know we don't want you know uh, Andy said we don't want yeah. this data overload uh that confuse people or yeah. direct people to wrong you know um goal which is adding yeah. more activities we, we don't want to show the amount of activities per se um we want to focus on the impact for sure yeah It's very true. Thank you for dropping in the stats that are in the article there as well about Julia. This one, yeah, I can't do yeah. that. Uh, I, we should probably use this more yeah. often in a yeah. presentation. Yeah. <laughs> I, I pinged Yoast and know that they are personal friends and said, please, can you write this article on the Julia piece? Then I took that article to my CEO and said, we have to do something. <laughs> So yes, those are those are things that I, I so much think about. Um, we are exploring, this is one of multiple tools Automatic has shared generously at sponsoring at 1,000 a month. This may be the first push if we decide to continue with this tool in which we take it back to the community to help get the funds to secure the tool. Um, there are others that are out there, other tools that are already done. This one is a SaaS, so it is, we're paying for them already having set all of this up for us having them to maintain it. There is concern, will they be around? Um, I know Baturja in terms of age is, I don't know, 15 years old. I could get some more specifics to that, but we've seen other similar options out there. Orbit is another one. They used to be at orbit.love. They recently got acquired by Postman. Postman's been, Postman handles lots of API data. And when Postman acquired it, they announced that they would be shuttering it. Um, Postman has has recently come into the news in the past few months about uh, storing authorization keys in the cloud and some other kinds of behaviors. So maybe we don't want to work with an organization like that. Uh, Andy hides, <laughs> right? So so there are so that tool got deprecated. Um, Linux Insights has taken Grimoire Lab and kind of swooped it into their Linux Insights. There are some additional tools out there to explore, and then Joaquin had mentioned. Um, there is a tool within Google 
that he was proposing a way of setting it all up. And so some of the factors, Joaquin is very much a developer mindset. He also spoke about some Python type of things that could be done this morning as well. And that was great. Um, we have to look also not just at costs and maybe taking it to the community to get the costs covered. If we continue to go forward, if we add more sources to this, the cost will go up. If we need custom dev work to add in, making sure that WordPress revisions are covered, not just an RSS feed, that we could either end up paying for the cost of dev build or not. We might have some additional factors that I'm not aware of. So at EU this year, I will be doing my best to make my rounds to the tables and speak with folks to say, what are the kind of data points that you need? What types of factors am I not considering yet? Let's get that documented. Let's hear really about a lot of these thoughts. Um, but then if we were to go the route of either self-hosting some open source tools like Remoria Lab, we could just self-host it and try and build out ourselves. Um, that gives us a good start. However, uh, the labor involved becomes more of the issue. And that would also be true for something like Google as well. And then, I don't know, I would want to talk to more Europeans about Google concerns. They seem to be the <laughs> continent that has concerns. <laughs> I'm sure Andy? I would love to, to, to support that too. Uh, mm, yeah. So, um, so there are ways to build things ourselves as an option. Uh, we're still considering all the things. And so I think having a good pros cons list of what tools we pick, why we pick it, who come, who has access to the data. I hear Ben's concern and I would echo it as a team rep. Um, you know, having an idea of, did this initiative help or not? Does doing this thing to the GitHub repo help keep contributors coming to the GitHub repo or, or not? Why do we think people are not contributing? There's a lot that could be done with the data and we know that. Um, thinking through who gets what amount of information, how we tell the stories, who has access to raw data, that's all something to still consider. And I wanna say how much I value each of you for coming and hanging out with me. Um, absolutely value being able to hear the feedback, get the word out about what we're trying to work on with this. I think it takes all of us to get it there. Thank you for organizing and, it. Absolutely, yes. And I again, Hari and Azara have done a good bit of the most recent work, but Naoko helped us kick off with a lot of this work too. And I am certainly not the one pulling all of it together. I'm just here to make a space for you all to give us input. Cool. So the um question about the uh, next steps. So I've been yeah. kind of away for three months. I was covering some of the things uh while Chloe was away, and mm -hmm. I'll be back after we can be up uh in a more you know part of the future focus uh role. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to set like some you know milestones and maybe mm -hmm. by WordCamp US next uh this year. Mm -hmm. What can we do? Maybe we can have a demo. Um. Is that Great. something you're thinking about? I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. based on. Yeah. So what I want to, my, my initial was, oh, we have the tool. Oh, we've got it for a month. I don't know if we have it for more than a month. Okay. Let's make sure we get some feedback in. Uh, so I, I've kicked off four hangouts at least to start. And I am so thankful that we've had the folks that we have had because they are very invested. Many team reps have popped in. Uh, many longtime contributors have popped in as well. People representing all different pockets of this project. Um, we want to synthesize the four hangouts. I can get the audio transcripts, the text, if that helps us as well. So I would like to put down the ideas that were shared during these hangouts as a synthesized post. I'm open for people that would like to help with that because I'm going to Montclair uh, on Friday, where Camp Montclair is happening this, this coming weekend. So I will be doing that. And I'm assuming Roger's going to be busy doing that too, um, since we're supposed to have dinner there <laughs> uh, Friday night. Uh, so uh, not offering that. If I can get any of that synthesized, if not, I will certainly make those files available to those of us that have kicked off where we are so far. Uh, if anyone else would like to volunteer, this work is within the sustainability team. So we can certainly make that available. And then I am also, I shared a bit of this information with Joost de Valk, the, the person, not the company, mm -hmm. um, because his former company, 
the plugin, used to contribute quite a lot. Um, and he also has the experience of having worked in one enterprise and consulting for others. So uh, he's he's kind of thinking through some of this. And at Europe, he will be speaking with Juliet uh, as the opening keynote for Europe, which I'm very excited about. And then I'm also working on getting, I have a meeting on the books with Karim Marucci, who is the main point of contact for me for Scale Consortium. So I want to hear from the enterprise agency space too. So I'm their customers look at open source projects from a whole different lens about why should we pick this open source project? Um, and sometimes they sign up for 10 years at a stretch. We're going to lock in 10 years on this one platform. Uh, so when they sign kind of contracts like that, they may have different factors that any of us are paying attention to <laughs> about how they gauge the health of a project. And some of those organizations are known to back contributions in different ways. And so I think it important that we allocate some time to get feedback from them. Kareem being quite a busy individual, my meeting is a week from now. So <laughs> unless we catch each other before then. Uh, so that gets me into Europe, doing some rounds and anyone that would like to participate with this, I'll certainly be hitting up the training team, Ben. Uh, but to ask some more detailed questions, I don't know that I want to do a demo there, but I want to say how would you, uh, some questions along the lines of what would help automate the process for team reps now? What would help, uh, you know, getting some insights like, oh yeah, if we do an initiative for our little micro community in this project, how do we know it's successful? Gathering that type of feedback from as many of the teams, similar types of feedback would be really valuable during Europe. Um, coming away with a post about that. And then I think I could use some help, Nayoko, on how do we decide uh, what are the factors that we look for mm -hmm. in which yeah. tool or if we decide to build ourselves mm -hmm. um, and how do we make the right choices from that perspective? I feel like I've heard a good bit of input about... Um, Factors like we need WordPress revisions, we need track, we need GitHub integrated, we might want Slack integrated. So looking at all the integrations and then some additional features and then knowing what are our factors for our choices and publishing that I feel like would be good to do after Europe. And then we begin assessing which tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then maybe by US we can have a more firm here is what we have selected and where we're going with it and things like that. Mm. I don't know if that's a reasonable time frame. I'm yeah. open for if feedback. It, <laughs> if it's not like automated, maybe we can do yeah. actual like demo demo, which is just yeah. the even like a WordPress page with these potential visualizations. So that would be yeah. uh, exciting to have some, you know, sometime Certainly. soon. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds Very like good. a good plan. Very good. Well, I wish you all either a good night or a good morning, depending on <laughs> where on the map you are. Yep. Thank you all. And I will hit stop. Thank you, Courtney. Absolutely. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Okay. Is anyone